Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm gonna show you how to take visible and even an invisible layer from the new Landsat 9 satellite. Yes, Landsat 9, a crazy robot that orbits the Earth taking environmental images of our beautiful planet. I'll show you how to combine them to make an optical visual approximation of how it might look with our eyeballs if we were floating in space. Red, green, blue, a little bit of near infrared. And then, as a bonus, we're gonna do some pan sharpening kind of thing. Not quite pan sharpening, but you know, it's pan sharpening using blend modes. Let's dive in. So here we are at the USGS Earth Explorer tool where you can download all manner of incredible data. I've zoomed into Madrid here because I'm cheating and Madrid has, you know, nice arid climate. And I don't have to deal with a lot of cloud cover <laughs> and I want to do easy things. I'm going to use the map as my search extent and the data sets that I'm interested in are Landsat. Hey, Landsat. Now, Landsat 9 is now available. It's a massive improvement over Landsat 8, but similar in the layers that are available. And I'm gonna look at Collection 2, Level 2, Collection 2, Level 1. Collection 2, Level 2 has Landsat 8 and 9 options, and it's all, hey, check it out, Landsat 9, woo! I say okay, and I'll choose Collection 2, Level 1, and check this one as well. More Landsat 9 stuff. This option is going to contain some of the visible spectrum like red, green, and blue bands. This option is going to have the much higher res grayscale panchromatic band. It collects at a broad set of wavelengths but it's got higher resolution as a result. But it's grayscale. What do we do? We can bake them together with blend modes. So let's see what our options are here. I'll look at the footprint for this guy. Yes. And I'll download it. It's almost a gigabyte by the way. I've already downloaded it. And I'll switch the data set that I had checked in the previous thing to look for my panchromatic stuff. High res, grayscale, same date, February 8th, a couple days ago, right here. I want it. Wow, over a gigabyte. Now, how do I even know what I'm looking for? Eh, I mean, it's the last time I worked with Landsat data, I was in college, and that was 78 years ago. My friend Joshua Stevens sent me this great resource, link in the description that describes all of the content for Landsat's eight and nine bands and what wavelength they are. We're gonna be using band two, which is blue, three green, four red, and we're gonna sneak in band five near infrared because it's magical and just makes everything better. And then we're also gonna bring in band eight, panchromatic. That's why we had to download that second bundle. Look at the meters in resolution, 30 meter resolution, except for the panchromatic band, which has a higher res look at the surface of the earth, 15 meters. That's like four times the resolution. It's grayscale, but we'll use the detail of this grayscale layer to bake some crispiness into our color layers. Just look at all this glorious, glorious data. So many pixels. So much goodness. Let's fire up ArcGIS Pro and see what we've got. So here are our layers, Landsat 9, level two. Let's look for band two. There's band two, it's a geotiff. This is the blue wavelength, how our eyes gather information that we consider to be blue. Looks like this, blue. It's grayscale, because it's just a single band. Color is weird, color only exists in our mind. Let's bring in green, band three, put it on top and band four, which is red. And I'm gonna bring in band five also, which is near infrared, just beyond what our eyeballs can see, but it can make some stuff pop with that. Okay, here we go. Turn these off. Here is our blue band, I'll take a closer look. This is the green wavelength reflectance. Here's the red wavelength reflectance, red, always looks the coolest, by the way, if you're just looking at a grayscale version of these things. Red is the highest contrast, most interesting looking one. Blue will be the most prone to fuzziness and uh, atmospheric issues. And here's near infrared. Anything that's uh, leafy green vegetation will really reflect highly. So I'll turn these off. You could use the band calculator to surgically stitch these into a single image file, but I'm gonna show you how to just goof around and frankly have exquisite amounts of control about how these are blended together. And we're gonna have fun doing that. Let's take a look at this blue band and actually make it blue. I'll format this color scheme instead of black to white. It'll be black to bluish. That's not really blue though, is it? 
If I mouse over it, I can see there's some green in there as well. So I'm gonna open this color chip, go into the color properties, and make sure that everything is set to zero except for blue, which is full 255 strength blue, just nice and clean blue, 0000FF if you're hexadecimally inclined, which I am. I'll hit okay. Now I see some purple in this interpolation between black and blue. Let's just go very basic, and instead of hue saturation value algorithm, I'm gonna choose the linear algorithm, and it's what you might expect, black to blue, nice clean gradient from black to blue. Okay, cool, huh? Actually, this is pretty cool just by itself. But anyways, this is the world with our blue filter goggles on. Only the blue wavelengths are getting through, and it looks blue. Turn on green, and similarly, format this color scheme so that it goes from black to full green. And that's going to be, let's do RGB, 0, 255, 0. And that hex is 0 full Fs for green, and then zero for red, just to check. Hit OK, and we'll set that algorithm to linear. Hit OK. Green goggles strapped on. Let's bring in the coolest looking wavelength, which is red. If you've only got one color band and you want to use a grayscale map, red is always going to give you the nicest looking result. Good high contrast. It's handsome. Let's make it black to red. Format color scheme, black to red. In this case, Mars red is a nice, clean, pristine version of red. See how it's 255, zero, zero. This algorithm will switch to linear, black to red, hit OK. Woo! Intense. Okay, now we've got our red filter goggles strapped on. How do I bake all these together visually? What we want to do is mathematically stitch these together, and that's what blend modes let us do. So with the red layer selected, I'll go into the appearance, and the layer blend right now is normal, which means it just renders on top. I'm going to choose screen. So now the red values and the green values are kind of mixing together in an additive fashion. Play around with blend modes. They're a lot of fun. Get familiar with them. Let's do the same thing with green. I'm going to select the green layer and make this screen so that it bakes into the blue. Watch this. Now we've got sort of a diluted, low contrast, kind of washed out version, but it's full color. This is, you know, the earth. Ha <laughs> ha, we've done it. Visually, we've stitched together these three visible wavelengths to get sort of a, a full color, true color, red, green, blue image of the area around Madrid. Now, it's a little bit light in lower contrast, but this is the benefit of using blend modes in discrete layers. We can really tweak these and push and pull these values individually as much as we want. So for this red value, I'm going to look at the appearance properties here. Now by default, ArcGIS Pro will take any raster layer that you drop in here and it'll do its best to actually automate a decent looking amount of contrast and brightness and gamma and stuff. It'll play with your image. So I'm going to just reset this stuff to the normal default values. Gamma of one, contrast will set to zero, and brightness will set to zero. Resampling, I'm going to choose bilinear instead of nearest neighbor, so it's less kind of pixely jaggy. They'll blend slightly. And it's using percent clip, um, so it's actually trimming off the ends of the color histogram here, the extreme low uh, red areas are clipped off and this extreme high red areas are clipped off just to increase the contrast. Pro does that by default. I can just show all of the pixel values and you get kind of a muted, like there's less red now, what's going on? I'll set it back to percent clip. It looked better before, so let's go with it. Now by default, it sets these min and max values for your percent clip. This is the percentage that it's trimming off the tails of your histogram. Let's get crazy and make this five. Ooh, now we've got more red coming in here. I'm really chopping off the tails. Let's chop off the low end of this tail, make it five. And it is a little bit low contrast still, so I'm gonna come up to this contrast slider and just goof around until it looks a little bit better. Okay, we've got a red happening here. It's a good idea to keep in mind the full extent of your map. So it might look good in one area and you're like, oh no, I ruined it over here. So let's take a look at everything we got. This is a nice, nice perspective. Let's take a look at green. Uh, and we'll just play with this contrast while we're here. I can go 
less contrast, more contrast. Remember, this is specifically the green band. This is how much green is getting into our eyes. We can go insane, like it's a poster that's been hanging in an old grocery store. Or we can go to like, I thought 22 looked okay, just like red. And this gamma value defaulted to 1.6, but I'm going to bring it whoa, way down. Interesting. Um, now let's take a look at our percent clip factors. We're pretty close, but instead of 0 0.25, let's go with 0 0.5. Trim a little bit more. And I'm liking this. Now you might not like it as much, but I like it. That's Part of the glory of this is there's so many handles to push and pull to make this look like uh, reality, or maybe better than reality. And we'll check out this blue layer. Good old blue. We'll bring this gamma right down. Oh my goodness, what a difference. Let's bring the contrast up. I liked 22 for the other bands. Let's see how, that's nice. You know, too much contrast, too little contrast. 22, Goldilocks. Percent clip, I'm gonna leave this on the percent clip as opposed to just minimum, maximum, or standard deviation is kind of an interesting option too, but let's play with just chopping off the ends of this histogram. The top end looks okay, the bottom end, maybe I wanna chop a little bit more off the dark end of this blue histogram. I'm gonna make it five. Now I've got less blue at the bottom end, you get a more golden, richer representation. Again, you might like it differently. That's why it's so fun to play with these variables. So let's see what we've got. Turn these off. We've got this blue band, bring in the green band with a screen layer blend. We bring in the red band also with a screen layer blend. And it's looking really rich and delightful. Now, why did I bring in this near infrared layer? Our eyes can't collect data at this wavelength, but it's actually a really wonderful wavelength, especially for agriculture and forestry. Some vegetation reflects highly in this wavelength. I mean, I don't know. Ooh. Bananas. Okay, well, if it kind of approximate bright leafiness, why don't I use a color scheme that's kind of bright and leafy, and we'll see what happens. So black to yellow and then I'll it's a little bit too much amber in here um, push this a little bit and I'm gonna choose this dark green again I'm gonna do linear and linear here too okay so I've got like this nothingness to oh I'm gonna show you a little bit of green and then I'm pow I'm gonna hit you with yellow on the top end of this that's interesting and we haven't baked it together with a layer blend mode. So let's do the same layer blend, which is a screen. This is interesting. Holy smokes, Madrid has never looked so verdant before, after. I mean, obviously it's too much. So let's start chipping away at this thing's histogram like we did with the other ones. Um, the bottom end, I'm gonna chop a lot of this off and make it uh, darker. I'm gonna give this a five and the top end I'm gonna bring back a little bit more content. I'll go zero, one, like really just a bit. And then I've got something It's kind of glorious looking. What about gamma? Too much gamma. Ooh, actually the lower we get in gamma, it gets interesting until you go too far. Let's just set it to one. Wonderful blending of blue, green, and red wavelengths into a single flattened perspective with a little bit of near infrared to provide some punch for leafy green areas. We've got some rich reds happening down here in this more arid region. We've got some pretty interesting textures happening in this mountainous zone to the west. And let's zoom right into the extent of this content's resolution. Source resol resolution, here's Madrid. Okay, what was all that talk about sharpening this image with the black and white panchromatic band of higher resolution? Here it is, band eight from the other data set that we downloaded, level one, band eight. Let's add it in, oh man. And it looks like this. Now if we zoom to the extent of this resolution, we can go way further. Look at how pixelated it is at this scale with our red, green, and blue and infrared layers. 
If I turn on this panchromatic layer, there's so much crisp detail. How can we bake this detailed texture into the colors of this set of data? Well, you could run what's called pan sharpening algorithm and output a new layer, or you could be stingy like I am and just use the luminosity blend mode. Luminosity will cook the tone and texture of this grayscale image, which is higher res, with the lower res colors underneath it. My goodness, look what we've got. And of course, by default, Pro has done some um, assumptions about optimizing this layer, but we can override those assumptions and decrease or increase the contrast. Contrast is kind of what we're after, so I don't want to decrease contrast. Let's just set this to zero. And the gamma, um, one and a half gamma seems to do it for me before, after, I like that. Is there anything we can do with the amount that's clipped off the tails of our layers data histogram? Let's see. So it's very little, let's, let's chop some more content off. So I'll make this two, and I'll make this one two. A low end and I like this higher contrast maybe my whites are being blown out a little bit here but uh, overall I think this is pretty nice and I'll do a swipe for you just so you can kind of get a sense for what we've gained by doing that pan sharpening pass giving it a luminosity blend mode to cook it together what a difference Landsat 9 it's new it's marvelous and experiment with taking the blue, green, red, and maybe even near infrared bands and blending them together with a screen blend mode, giving them a color gradient that matches the wavelength that we perceive them as in our minds. Then drop in this texture enhancement higher res layer, and give it a luminosity blend mode, wrap it all up into a beautiful crispy package.